All right, we gotta take a break because uh, Rob Gronkowski's here. Enough of me talking, nobody wants to hear that. We go Rob Gronkowski on the show. Okay, now people are gonna be like, is he gonna go to the Dolphins? He's wearing the, he's wearing the Aquamarine. That's, I don't know, I don't know. This tweet from Rob Gronkowski shook the world. Major waves yesterday on the interwebs. A lot of speculation on what could this mean? Well, people, we got our answer this morning. I'm bored. I may go back and play. Just kidding. But I really need something to do. Hello? I've been waiting for this phone call. Yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'll see you soon. <laughs> I'm bored. Let's bring him in right now. Four-time Super Bowl champion, four-time All-Pro Mr. Yo Soy Fiesta himself, Rob Gronkowski. Hello. Hey, Kay. How you doing? I'm so good. Congratulations. This is major news. Yes, yes, it is. I partnered up with FanDuel. It is definitely major news. And let me let me tell you, last night with the tweet, um, I'm kind of <laughs> bored with the emoji. Um, it has definitely caused, I wouldn't really say problems, but it has definitely caused an uproar on what was next with myself. What The funniest part about it was my agent. He's definitely super agent, Drew Rosenhaus. Yeah. He texted me within 30 minutes of the tweet. That's how on top of, of the game he is. He loves football. He lives. He breathes football 24-7. He hit me up and wrote, Rob, are you really bored? Do you want me to start calling teams for you? And I'm like, Drew, you're like number one super agent. You proved it once again. Every year you prove it. But he was on top of his game that quick. And I just started laughing like, no, Drew, you know I'm not playing. But he just still wanted to see me of out course. there and call some teams. The legend. Which was great. Legend Drew Rosenhaus. Listen, fans were so excited for the past 24 hours, and then uh, some of them let down a little bit because this, you know, it's you. Everyone wants you to join their team. Reggie Jackson said, "Yo, you need to call Tom." Lane Johnson's giving you the googly eyes. Sports Illustrated, Caesars, by the way, which I think is funny. Haha, <laughs> jokes on you. Uh, question for you, Rob Gronkowski. Now, FanDuel partner, we're celebrating that all the morning. Did any NFL teams reach out to you? Uh, since the tweet. All right, since the tweet, uh, yes, two teams reached out who? since the tweet. I, it was unbelievable. I don't say who, but yes, there was two teams. It was it was pretty nuts to me that everyone actually saw the tweet. Like, it, it shows how far social media can go and how quick it can travel. Yeah. Because I barely tweet, actually. I just tweet, you know, once in a while, but, like, I'm kind of bored. It was just people took that as I was coming back to the football right away. And it was just mind blowing actually how my agent hit me up, two teams hit me up. Like it was just, it yeah. was just crazy. And uh, my friends actually were hitting me up too. They're like, bro, are you really going back to football? Like, I don't see that, you know, I don't see that happening. It was, I was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm not They're Like you're a genius. I was like, I'm signing, I'm announcing I'm signing with FanDuel tomorrow. They're like, man, what a play you're doing. I'm like, it really wasn't that big of a play. It was just a little tweet. So, so when Bill Belichick called you, did you guys catch up on family and stuff too, or? Oh yeah, we talked about our Christmas plans. You know what he's doing with his dog. He think his dog Nike. He want his dog wants to meet my dog Ralphie. Okay. Uh, he wanted to build some snowmen. You know, put the care as the nose. All that good <laughs> stuff. Gronk, <laughs> Gronk, were the two teams that just were the two teams that uh, called you teams that you played for? Possibly and possibly not. I'm going to yeah, say... Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I, my lips I, are sealed I now. You. I don't give answers away now like that. Drew Rosenhaus is calling right now saying, don't you dare tell her anything. Just put it this way. Drew wanted to call every team. That's what he wanted to do. But I love that two teams called you, and I know which two teams they are based on this conversation, which I love. But you know what? No, they you don't. Lose. They no, lose. you don't. Well, they lose either way. Whoever called you, because you're part of the FanDuel family. So it's you, me, Pat McAfee, Jordan Spieth, Charles Barkley. That's a hell of a little Christmas dinner, Rob. Yes, that is. That's a family right there. We're going to all have to get together soon and uh, toast to FanDuel and uh, have some uh, holiday, have a holiday dinner with all of us. Of course. Uh, Rob, so tell, it's over, huh? Like it's... If it, you you look like you're happy celebrating, uh, is it really over? No playoff, Gronk. Will you play professional football again? 
no, no, I'm not playing this year. I mean, I, I can't, you know, tell you what I'm going to do next year or the year after. Brock, you never know. There, there could be a slight chance. They're, they're, they're like, it's like the dumb and dumber. So you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. What and, would uh, it- Yes, there, I'm saying there's a chance. But like, like that, like a little chance like that. But um, what was wild, though, was yesterday I put that tweet up like I'm kind of bored, but actually I'm not even bored at all. Like I've been doing a lot of things. I stay busy. Um, I had a great shoot um, that, that I'm not really supposed to talk nope, about. No, nope, no, nope. Yeah. So I'm not going to say anything else. I've been having great shoots. I've been working, uh, you know, being an analyst as well, which has been going great. And um, I've also been staying busy with activities. I've been, you know, practicing basketball a lot. Uh, I've been doing pickleball a lot. Okay. Which is a great activity, a great workout. And uh, I've been lifting still, working out, running a little bit. I just like to stay in shape. My dad, obviously, it's through my family. And my dad's been in the uh, fitness industry for 32 years now. He's wow. been selling fitness equipment. So it's just in my blood to stay in shape, to do activities, and um, just to stay active. And another thing I did at, yeah, actually yesterday I got to give back. I went to the Children's Hospital in Springfield, Massachusetts, the Shriners Hospital. I got to meet with eight kids. I went to the store. I bought each kid two pairs of shoes. I gave them a, a signed Buccaneers jersey, a signed Patriots football, because I wasn't sure, you know, it was in Mass. I wanted them to have a Patriots gear, too, and also a uh, Tampa gear, too. So I also gave them one of my brother's ice shakers so they can put their drink oh. in it wherever they are. And let me tell you what a blast it was to see the smile on the kids' faces. It was one of the best things I've done in quite a, quite a long time. Well, Gronk, you, you can't really say that because you're always doing good stuff. Like when I was up in New England covering the Patriots, I would talk about it on that little sports show that I did. If they're like, Gronk, it's all, you know, he's a caricature and he does this and the crews. But you are you are so generous, honestly. You really are. You have such a big heart. You're always giving back, whether it's the $1.2 million you donated last year. We all, People don't talk about this enough. You helped renovate a Boston playground. You've got the partnership with uh, USAA donating military vehicles to Veter- or, yeah, uh, donating vehicles to military veterans that are in need. And this season, we have we have footage of that. You dressed up. You didn't just go. You dre- you went all the way. Take a look. Look. Let me come on, Gronk. The best day ever. Thank you to Santa Claus for sending Robbie G the Elf here to Springfield Shriners Children's Hospital. The kids were so excited. I was excited. They were so happy to receive all their gifts. They had so much joy. Thank you, Santa, for sending us here. Thank you to Springfield Shriners Hospital here, all the staff and everyone. It was the best day ever. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. So when you say you're keeping busy, I mean, that's what you're doing. That's what you were about as a player, a young player. You were about that. And what keeps you wanting to give back like that? Yeah, it's always about giving back. I mean, everyone always supported, you know, every Sunday there would be 80,000 fans coming to the stadium to support, you know, whatever team I was on, to support myself as well. And um, also going to the Patriots, Mr. Kraft has established, you know, giving back to the community, and that just emboiled right into my blood from the very beginning when I I joined the Patriots. And uh, they just have a great program over there that has just settled in into my heart and uh, just saw what the, the Patriots were doing, what Mr. Kraft was doing, just giving back every single Tuesday during the season and just saw how special that was. So I've, I've just continued it from, uh, you know, my Patriot days, um, going to Tampa and also now not playing, just finding ways to give back, you know, especially to the kids. I just had such a yeah. great, you know, childhood. I had so many friends around to play with. I had all the equipment, even though it was hand-me-downs from my brother. I still had all the equipment to uh, for hockey, for baseball, yeah. for football, for whatever it was. So I'm, I just love to give back to the kids and give them the opportunity that I had to succeed and uh, to the next level. Especially, I mean, I'm looking at some, I need you to fact check something. I saw this on Instagram earlier. And speaking of the holidays and you come from such a big family, is it true, just fact check some of this stuff for me. Is it true that your family spent Christmas Eve 1996 in the emergency room because you got in a mini sticks battle with your brother Goose in the basement and he had to get six stitches? Yeah, so there's actually film of this out there too. My mom finally found uh, the film because she was filming it. And my brother was going across the middle with his hockey stick. He was very young. 
but it was all allowed. Like there was checks allowed. There was everything allowed. And I absolutely leveled him. He went flying. I think the stick, it was the stick that went across his chin or his, his chin hit the ground. It was either. Or I got to, I got to review the film, but uh, he had, my mom went right to the hospital, broke open his chin. He had six stitches. So that's just one of the legendary stories about us growing up. Your so mom is a legend. Of, Your mom oh, is an mom. absolute legend. Oh, 100% she is. And she actually has this amazing book that she just came out with this year called Outnumbered. And it told, it explains the whole book is about how she managed all five of us because there's five sons she had and how she brought us to all the practices, how she fed us. Because my, my, my mom was just a workhorse with us. My dad was working and my mom managed us to make sure we were but every second sure that we had our food, that we had lunch, that we had dinner, and just the whole book is about how she did it, and it's just an unbelievable read. Rob, I want, can we bring her on the show sometime? Actually, 100%. She that would love to come on the show, and that that is the best Christmas idea ever, and that's going to be her Christmas present as well. I'm going to tell her she's going on the show. She would love it, and hey, Kay, we're following through with that. Yes, she's I'm going not kidding. On, she's I would coming love on that. this show. I would love that. 100%. I mean, you, she, she, she deserves that kind of presence after getting you a Space Jam comforter for Christmas in 1996. Yeah. What's funny is that my uh, my football coach, not my gym teacher, who was, who was my football coach for JV football, he came over one day because we were really good friends with him, Mr. Jacobs, and he saw my Space Jam, uh, Space Jam comforter, and he just started making fun <laughs> of me, and it, I still remember that to this day. Rob, that's amazing. In honor of you dressing as an elf, so as in honor of Robbie the elf, let's say we're going to play a little game called Elf It or Shelf It. I'll give you a topic, and you tell me whether you're into it when you elf it, or if you're not into it, in which case we shelf it. Okay. All right, let's do it. I like it. First up, it's the holidays, which means love is in the air, of course. Mistletoe, is it still a thing? Are we elfing it or shelving it? Oh, I, have, I haven't heard of all the mistletoe in, in quite some years, so we're going to shelf it. You're not into the kissing of mistletoe. I'm into it. Shelf it. It's out. Sorry. Uh, listen, nobody sailed the open sea quite like you with the Gronk party cruise. It's been a while. Elf it or shelf it? Gronk party cruise. Oh, man. The party cruise was a was a one-off, so we're gonna shelf the party cruise, but we do have Gronk Beach now, which actually Gronk Beach is going down uh, at the Super Bowl again this year on Saturday. So the Gronk Beach is alive, but the party cruise, that was a one and done. That was pretty wild though, that was a one and done, so we're shelving that one. I love your quotes from that post party cruise. You're like, I don't know how we did that. I don't know how that, I don't remember what happened on that thing. Uh, next up, Gronk, TikTok. Are you in on TikTok? It's kind of hard to do. Here you are TikToking. Are you elfing it or shelving it? Uh, I'm elfing it. You know, TikTok is one of the most legendary social media apps out there right now. I'm definitely elfing it. You know, I definitely need help with making the videos. I get help with making the videos and all the trends that are going on, but I love the videos that are out there. And uh, it's for the kids as well. The kids love TikTok. They do all the kids, all the kids love it. Now you have flirted with this before. Rob Gronkowski, the wrestling star, you of course ended your relationship because you came back to the NFL. Elf it or shelf it ever again? You know, it's on the shelf right now, but you never know that Elf could go onto the shelf and take it off the shelf. So it's kind of an in-between. <laughs> so it may be in the future. It's kind of like football. You just yeah. don't know. You just don't know. I'm always ready. I'm staying in shape. You just never know. So that's kind of like, it's on the shelf, but it may be elf in the future. Okay, and then there's the number 69. It really had a moment with Rob Gronkowski during your playing days. Are you still in on it? Are we elfing or shelfing the number 69? Actually, it just came back. And I can tell you this. One of the teams that wanted me to come back sent me a picture of me in a uniform wearing number 69 wow. and told me that I could be number 69. This was two days ago. If I come back, I could be number 69 and check in eligible every play where the, where the referee would have to go over the microphone and say, number 69 is eligible every single play. So yes, it is out. It is back in action. And that, that almost got me to go back to football. It almost like that, that is what it took. If anybody out there is wondering what will it take to get Gronk out of retirement and back on a team, you have to let him wear the number 69. That, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, and the referee has to over oh. the microphone to the whole stadium. Number 69 is eligible. 
Naturally, naturally. So, I mean, the Buccane kudos to the Buccaneers social team, because they're great at making those photoshops. No, no, it, it wasn't the Buccaneers. <gasps> I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you who it was, Kay. I, you know, I, 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 let you, I just let a little info out, but I don't give you the, the exact yeah, details. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that. There's, like, You're the king of, like, unretired. Like, you made retirement not a thing anymore. The door's always open. You can always come back. You and your friend Tom Brady, of course. Actually, it's not even me. It's wherever I go. I like walk into the grocery store. What are you coming back, Rob? It's like, it's like I didn't leave the retirement door open, so now I'm just going along with it. So it's so many people, so many fans. I love it, though. My fans just love to see me out on the football field, yeah. which is great. That's what it's all about. Um, but they basically leave the door open for me. Like, you got to come back. If you don't come back this year, come back next year. So then I just keep the door open then because – my fans keep the door open for me, so yeah. it works well. Shout out to the fans. Uh, when's the last time you went out in public and weren't recognized? Uh, well, the thing is, I'm like 6'6", six, six, like 260 pounds, so it's like if people don't really recognize me, they look at me and they're like, what, what sport do you play? Like, and it's a lot of times when people don't actually know that I play football, they're like, oh, you're a basketball player. What team do you play for? And then I tell everyone I played for the University of Arizona basketball team <laughs> and that I wasn't any good and I rode the bench and that I never made it to the pros. <laughs> I like that. I'm just thinking you're so big and you can't walk into like a CVS or a Vons or a Ralph's and just be you. You can't. And a lot of NFL yeah. players can, but you can't. It's kind of no, tight. But I bet that's tough. I actually, I actually fly commercial a lot now. I go to a lot of places in the public, but I got a lot of tricks. The pandemic ha has definitely had some benefit to my side. I put the mask on, and the mask goes yeah. right up to my eyes right there. I have a very comfortable mask that I can breathe re really freely in. And then uh, it goes right here, and then I put a hat on that comes right down to here. Oh, hold on. Oh, I got the hat. I just don't have my mask on me. I was going to show you. Tell and me. I go to airports. I go to malls like that. I go shopping, and not one person knows. But I also, I can't wear athletic clothes because people know my walk. It's weird. They're like, you're Gronk. I know your walk. You're hiding under the mask. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like shocked. They're like, can't see your face, but I can tell by your walk. So now I wear baggy clothes so people don't know it's me. And also, I try not to wear athletic shoes either. I try to wear really crappy shoes oh or dress gosh. shoes or something because that throws off people as well. I know it's funny and everyone's like, I actually feel, I feel for you on that. That would be awful to have to even think and consider those kind of things. I can't, I literally can't imagine. Yeah. But you, yeah, I know you yeah, embrace I mean, it because you want to see people, but some privacy would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mask trick, it yeah, works out. Trick. It's a good balance yeah, now. Yeah. Have you ever heard of those glasses that have like the nose and the mustache? You could just do one of those. Yeah, I could. But, but I would need like a hat on too. Like they know like, yeah. you know, they know top of my head too. It's it's wild. Gronk, new FanDuel partner, FanDuel family. Uh, two teams reached out to you. We're not close enough yet that you'll tell me which teams they are, but that's okay. Uh, I'll I, tell you after the season okay. when my mom comes on with okay, us. Okay, okay, that sounds great. She yeah. can come on, honestly, whenever. She can come on every time you come on. Um, the uh, Tom Brady, got to get to that. Have to, like, by, you know, obligation of journalism, ask you about it. By obligation. All right, that's fine. As long as you say that first. <laughs> When's the last time he called you? Oh, when he called me? No, mm -hmm. just a couple weeks ago. And has he called you to come play with him? No, no. We've talked before, before the season. And, um, you know, that's why he's such a great guy. He just wants the best for you. You know, he just wants people to be happy. Um, he just wants his teammates to be happy. Uh, he wants his friends to be happy. He wants his family to be happy. So uh, whatever it is, whatever makes you happy, you know, Tom's happy for you. And that's what makes him great. And uh, same with him. And that's why I believe if he's still playing football, people a lot of times question me, why is he still playing at 45? Yeah. Because it makes him happy. So he just wants to, you know, best uh, for everyone and wishes the best for everyone in whatever their situation is. But he always says, though, you know, if your heart changes and you think you'll be happier playing football, well, then come on back. So the door, you know, always leaves it open, but he also just wants the best for his teammates and, uh, and his friends. I think everyone really needs to listen to what you just said, because I think people will be like, oh, he didn't really say anything. Maybe everyone watching, it's just that simple. Tom wants to be happy. 
Playing football makes him happy. It's just that simple. It's not as complicated as we all want to make it and TMZ wants to make it and analyst. He just, it makes him happy and he wants to play. Um, I'll ask you this. What team, let, people are saying he's still looking to play potentially next year. With what team would you be least surprised to see him end up with? Who's that, Tom? Tom, next year, yeah. Like what team would be least, least surprising? Surprise? Yeah. Oh, well, the team that he's on right now. That would be the least surprising. Yeah. Right? It makes sense. Just stay just stay in one place. He loves Florida, loves the weather, loves, you know, loves the Buccaneers. So he's building a house down in Miami. Like that's like just a couple hours away. So yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. So that's the least surprising team. Uh, you're doing the analyst stuff on Fox. Every, I think it, it looks like whenever you feel like you, it literally looks like you just show up and are on TV whenever you feel like it. Is that how it works? Oh, uh, yeah, kind of. So <laughs> I, I'm actually only obligated to do about six appearances. So I've already done a couple and uh, I've kind of got it down now. So I was based I was doing it out of New York and they were kind of like zooming me in all the way over to L.A., which was great. I loved it. But then I finally went into the studio last week. It was fantastic. And then um, by next time I am appearing, we'll be for the playoffs. So I got three more segments. We're going to be knocking it out of the park during the playoffs. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be very, very awesome. And yeah. uh, I can't wait. You know, playoff action, playoff football is the best. Yeah, Fox is lucky to have you. Now, I, uh, up in Boston, where you started your career, of course, won many a Super Bowl um, ring, there's some New England, like, people, fans even, that are saying, respectfully, it's time to switch it up. New blood, new regime. It's time for Bill Belichick to maybe try something else. Do you think that's completely unhinged thinking, like insane? Uh, what I think that they just need to change is, you know, their defense is very, very strong. They're making plays all over the place. They got a good base uh, with McCourty leading the way, who has been there since uh, 2010 when he was drafted in the same class as me as the first rounder. He's just had an unbelievable career, and he's leading that defense. And uh, that's the guy that you want to lead that defense and put everyone in place. And then, um, but it's just, I would say the struggles are on the offensive side of the ball. Um, the coaching is always there. Like I said, I think uh, Coach Belichick, if it um, is definitely, if not the best coach of all time. So I really just think they got to make changes on the offensive side. I'm not really sure if the, I'm not in the building. I mean, some people say they need receivers. They need, you know, they need more offensive weapons. And some say it's the coaching um, with first year, you know, split between the, the offensive coordinator um, duties. So I think uh, personally that they just need one or two more playmakers on that offensive side of the ball that can go deep and uh, get open basically on um, whatever play they need to. Maybe a player who's 69 and eligible. Yes, yes, that is exactly what they need. And then <laughs> Coach Belichick, that gives them uh, another way to stand out as the best coach of all time because he's going to have to develop. Uh, how can I make this guy eligible every single play and how can I get him open? Because he has an offensive line number. So that would definitely put him as the best coach of all time if he could figure that out. I think he is up for the task. You are part of our FanDuel family, Rob Gronkowski. We're going to say bye to you. But not before we bring in our next guest, another member of our family. I'm sure you're familiar with Eric Weddle, who is here. You two had a couple battles against each other, huh? Gronk, what's yeah, good, man? Eric, what's up, man? <laughs> this is the this guy's the last dude. You came in for the playoffs. How did you come in for the playoffs, man? Just like that. How did you do that? You know, it's, it's you just do it, right? You uh, you got an opportunity. You do you do the same if if everything the stars aligned like it like it had to for me to come back. So, man, it's good to see yeah. you. You seem so happy and invigorated and energized. It's you know, as you know, uh, we we both had teammates that that struggle with with the next stage, and it's always good to see guys uh, happy and 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 doing their thing, man. It's it's good to see you. Yeah, definitely, man. Good good to see you as well. And definitely, yeah, you definitely do see a lot of people struggle, man. Um, I would say one thing, though, for athletes that, you know, once they're done playing is to continue, like, working out because, like, you know, try to find the way. Because a lot of guys just stop working out. You, you lose those endorphins and everything. Is to stay active, you know, and fit because that's what you've been doing your whole life. Your brain knows that. Your mind knows that. Yeah, it's tough to find new opportunities it's tough to find what you love to do for work wise but if you're staying active you're keeping your mind and your body healthy then you're going to find those things but at the same time you're also staying busy keeping yourself fit so to all athletes out there i would say after you're done playing professional sports just stay fit and stay active no doubt
No All doubt, right. bro. For sure, man. Eric Weidel, you stay here. Gronk, you go do whatever it is that you do to stay active. We appreciate you so much. Congrats and welcome to FanDuel, buddy. Great to see you, Gronk. All right, Eric. Take care. Okay, good, good to buddy. see you. Good to Once see you. Again. We got the grit loose after this. Eric Weidel joins. Eric, I've never seen you without a hat. I'm very thrown off. <laughs>